Hey, what's going on? So I want to help you guys have some insight on what the four levels of business look like. Essentially from zero to a million, million to 10 million, 10 to 50 million, and then 50 million and above. Check out this video, it's gonna lend a lot of insights on what you need to do in each different phase and what you need to be focused on in each different phase. I wanna to talk to you about the four stages of business. They're financial stages, and you're gonna see the difference in opportunity and struggles in each one of these different phases. So let's start with the first one. The first one is from zero to a million dollars. 96% of businesses fall into this category. The second stage is from uh, a million to $10 million. About 3.6% of businesses fall into that stage. The third stage is 10 million to $50 million. 0.4% of businesses fall into that category. And then 50 million and up, it's only like 17,000 businesses in the entire country that do more than $50 million a year in gross revenue. So let's go all the way back to the beginning and talk about each phase kind of one-on-one. -on -one. The first stage, which is zero to a million dollars, majority of businesses, 96% of businesses fall into that category. In that phase, you're just trying to figure out proof of concept. This is a lot of owner-operated businesses, solopreneur businesses, you know, you have a sales, you know, you're, you're a, a real estate agent and you have your own LLC and you're selling a certain amount of houses or whatever and you get compensated through that LLC. Again, 96% of businesses fall in that category. This is, it's okay uh, to show proof of concept, to try out your new product and launch a new service, but you don't wanna be there because essentially it's just a high paying job. So if you don't want a high paying job and you actually want your business serving you instead of you serving your business, you gotta get to the next level. The next level is a million to $10 million in gross revenue. A million to $10 million in gross revenue is actually like hell zone. Why? Because you know you have a business that makes sense. You know you have a business that makes money and you actually have something, right? Like there's, there's tangible proof that this business works. Do you think they'll actually have staples? No way. Yes. Wait, you know what this means. The problem is you're making enough money to know that it works, but not enough money to bring on A players into your organization. How do you only do a million and a half of, of revenue and, and expect to bring on somebody that costs you maybe 150 or $200,000 a year that's an A player that you're gonna have to pay and take that on as an expense in order to hit the next level. So what do you do in order to get out of hell zone? One of the things that I did early on was I joint ventured on a deal by deal basis with A players. So I joint ventured with them, I didn't have to take on their salary, instead I gave them equity in deals. I gave them equity in the next project or the next property that I was buying and I was able to then collaborate with A players in a way that I didn't have to take on the overhead, they were compensated for their performance based on how well the deal performed. Another thing that you could do is hire fractional employees or fractional help. So I have an outside uh, CPA that I pay on a monthly, quarterly basis to come in, review all of our books and act as our CFO and do our cash flow management and a lot of those kinds of things. And I'm just to the point where I'm probably gonna hire a full-time CFO. But right now, I didn't need it. I didn't need it on a full-time basis. I actually, my bookkeeper is a good example of this. She was started working for me on a one day a month basis. Then as we continue to grow, she started working for me one day a week. Then all of a sudden it turned into three days a week. Then we hired an in-house bookkeeper and I have now um, an external bookkeeper who kind of comes in and, and helps out as needed as well. So as you continue to grow your business and you need more support, you need more help, you can take on these uh, uh, outside uh, fractional type of employees, pay them on a, uh, you're gonna pay a premium versus what their hourly rate would be if they work for you full time, but they're not working for you full time, right? And so it's a less of an expense on a, on a monthly basis or weekly basis in order to bring them in and have expertise from their side before you have to stroke a check for six figures a year to bring that A player in house. The third thing that I did in order to attract A players in my business was I paid them a base salary. I'm of the mindset of paying people kind of like a base salary so that way they're not stressed about money but not so much that they're comfortable. I want them still motivated to do more and perform at a higher level. So a lot of times I'll pay somebody a base salary somewhere between 
I don't know. It depends on who they are and, and uh, what they're doing for the organization. But my executive team, who I couldn't pay six figures to, I pay them a base salary. So they might make three or four thousand dollars a month where they know that their monthly expenses are for the most part taken care of and they're not stressed about money, but they're also not comfortable where they are. They want to go and perform and achieve big things for the business because then I give them a profit share based on how well the business does overall. Sometimes that bonus is paid on their job specifically. Many times it's paid based on how the overall company performs and profits throughout the entire year. So those are three examples and three ways that you can attract A players into your team and not have to take on all that overhead so that way you can jump to the next level and do eight figures a year in business. Now when you get to that 10 million to 50 million dollar range, it's more about uh, growing, creating efficiencies and, and taking on market share. And how do we build up market share um, uh, increase income, decrease some of the expenses, and really scale the business. And as you can scale the business, you got the A players, you got the revenue coming in, and how do you continue to grow and take more market share? So this is the phase that I'm in. Uh, we have over 4,000 units that average about $800 a month in rent. Um, some a little less, some a little bit more, but we probably average around, around that. So if you multiply it all out, well, I don't know, we're probably in the, the 35 to $40 million dollars um, a year in rent range. Kind of also depends on if we're selling property or buying property. And then we have the education business that does several million dollars a year, uh, along with a couple other businesses. So like we're in the, the middle of phase three right now, uh, bet between 10 million to 50 million, trying to push to get to 50 million plus. From there, from 50 million and north, really what you need to be focused on is just continuous uh, reinventing yourself just only working on how to, how to dominate the industry by reinventing, being the absolute best, and just uh, offering better services, better products, and the best experience for customers, better than anybody else in the country. And this is, again, this is less than 0.01% of businesses actually fallen uh, $50 million and north. So they're all just vying for market share and looking to dominate in their respective industry. I'm again in the, in the middle kind of 10 to $50 million range. We're in the scale up phase. So hopefully this kind of gives you some insights on where you are in your business. Hopefully it gives you some insights on what you need to be focused on and where you want to be growing and what you need to be uh, paying attention to as you hit each different level in your business. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you have some good awareness on what you're looking for in your current state and where you want to be going in your business. And it's gonna help you kind of know what that next step looks like for you. If this was helpful for you, please share it, please like it, please subscribe, please comment. Let me know where you are in business right now and kind of what you're looking to do and what your biggest struggles are for getting to the next level. If it's something that I think would be helpful for across the board for a lot of entrepreneurs, I'll do a video on it. I'd love to answer your questions in these videos. So please comment below. Let me know what your biggest struggles are. And if you know somebody else who would benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. And make sure that we're connected on all the different social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them. Make sure that you're following or friending me and, uh, and we can engage a little bit more on all the different platforms. So appreciate you, love you, be your best. Hey, so obviously I put out a ton of free content on all the different social media platforms. But I have a lot of people who are looking for something a little bit more formal on how to invest in apartment buildings. So if that's you, come out to Commercial Empire. I have a two day high intensive course that gives you really the A to Z on how to invest in apartment buildings. It's a two day event, it's done virtually, you don't have to travel. Would love to have you out there. Appreciate you, look forward to seeing you at the next event.